Determined to breed with. I need a snake. I need to pause this. I, I pulled off everything from above my bed because I got a bulletin board to put above my writing desk, and I'm my perfectionism is kicking in here. And now I can't find something. I know I pulled off the fucking wall, huh? I'll show you what I have so far. So this is what we're working with. I still have some shit and then more pictures from travel over the years. But I'm looking, because I'm trying to fill this spot. And I grabbed, I had a sticker of Sailor Moon looking out her window. And I don't know where I put it. Found it, bitch, on the back of this postcard from, from Venice, yeah? Right here is where I want it to go. I have to pee so badly, but I wasn't going to pee until I finished this, and I finished it. Now I just have to tape the rest of them down. <laughs> Honestly, one of my most prized possessions is this ticket. It is the part two, the part one I put in my scrapbook, but that, I bought this literally two days before I went to see it, and it only, like, because it was a single seat, that's the only reason I got it because I know people buy, especially in London, they were buying this ticket like years in advance at the time. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed and I put a uh, attack in my movie stubs because I know I'll just continue adding to those. My two favorite ones are on top, which is uh, poor things and salt burn. Uh, now I just have to put it up there. Yes, bitch. Yes. I call this all the figs I have picked and eaten and devoured that filled my belly. Probably some are gonna fall in the night and scare the shit out of me, but I'm very happy with that. lovely aesthetic clips for me standing here with a knife but i got two movie posters well actually i have the, uh, the other ones in my bedroom but so i have three and i want to put the, originally i was gonna put them above the tv but i think i'm gonna put them in my room because my projector is in there and it's just giving way more like movie vibes in my room Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> ah! Okay. Should I show you? I think I'm gonna show you the one I already have. Wait. Uh. Okay, so I had to order this one special because this film is like not as popular, I guess. And I really wanted a specific, cause Redbubble did have this movie's posters but it, i wanted this specific one that i'm about to show you and red bubble didn't have one i don't think but it's a francis ha and i'm wait i did order the frames for these because these are all a2 prints and the other two posters i got is obviously this one and then obviously her these three films, Francis Ha, Saltburn, and Lady Bird, changed my life. All of them. Poor Things is getting up there, but it's not... It didn't change... Poor Things didn't change the trajectory of my life. 
yet. That's not to say I can't change out posters as time goes on. So now I'm just waiting on the frames for these. They're supposed to come either the end of this week or early next week. That's exciting. I love getting packages in the mail. amount of freezing rain we got last night. I thought we were gonna lose power. I'm shocked we didn't after last year's ice storm because let's not forget that. It's kind of pretty, I don't know. I'm supposed to work right now, but I might go to the gym because I kind of want to see what outside looks like. Like that is pretty. But don't be deceived, this shit ruined my life last year. So our new member of court is the Cauliflower Jelly Cat. And I have decided to name him, inspired by Brittany Broski. This is Rumpelgucher. Or Ron, for short. And he is so wonderful. And he could do nothing wrong. I really should be at work right now, but... We're here because I just need to talk about Montreal winters. <laughs> I'll never shut up about it. I think it's because last year, I want to, I don't want this to be too dark, but when you're so isolated and then going through like severe weather, mentally, I was not doing well to a point where I didn't think I was going to make it to spring. Hi. Last year's winter, there was the deep freeze in beginning of February and it hit minus 43 Celsius. And I lost all running water for about seven, six or seven days. That was difficult. And there was intermittent like freezing on my pipes throughout all of winter, like where I would like it'd be a day or two or three here and there where I lost water and constantly having my tub filled with water just so I can flush my toilet. We had way more snow last year and my Fiat got stuck a lot and that was scary and no one would help me and I was constantly stranded. And then I thought I made it out and then there was the beginning of April and the huge fucking ice storm hit. At that time last year, I had only made a couple friends here and all of them were not here at the time. And that's, I think, what made it so much worse. Over a million people in this, in Mon the Montreal area lost power. And it was so bad that people from, I think from New York and also like out of province, like uh, I think New Brunswick and people from Ontario came to like help restore power to everyone that had lost power here. The eight days without power, obviously I lost my phone at some point. And then I really lost connection, like with anyone. Then I, obviously I didn't have water either. So I was really dehydrated. And then at day five, I couldn't, my food really started to go bad in my fridge. The grocery stores, they were out of power too. And I went three days without eating. I couldn't, like there was, there was no water, there was no food. This is the second biggest city in Canada and that happens. And I've lived in Canada my whole life. I am a Canadian. I am, I can tolerate 
winter, but that I can't tolerate. And I did it alone. And I, I think that's the worst part is I was so fucking alone. When this winter came around, there was a lot of debate for me if I should leave or stay. I don't know if I'm going to stay the full winter yet. It's only January 25th. I don't know. But for right now, I'm trying to stick it out because I'm trying to finish my book before I start my CPA course in April. The plan is to go to Costa Rica if all else fails. If I go to Costa Rica, I just don't think I'll be writing my book as often as I want to be. And I'm really trying to stick this out because to heal is to experience the opposite. And, and I can't leave my concept of a Montreal winter based off one go. I, and that was, I supposedly that was an anomaly last year. So far, I believe that to be true because there's way less snow this winter. That being said, my pipes have frozen once and that it hasn't even been one full year since the deep freeze. The deep freeze was the beginning of February. So why this is like really flaring up right now is last, like I said, in April, there was that ice storm and that's what really sent me right over the edge. And last night we got freezing rain again and I couldn't sleep. I was like, I, I was literally laying in bed and I could feel my heartbeat. I could like hear it in my ears because I was so fucking scared that it was going to happen all over again. And, and it's just, it's just such validation. Like the body remembers, like you internalize it. You really do. And then on the way to the grocery store today, I still have power, obviously on the way to the grocery store, I slipped and ate shit. So everything was ice. Like, concussed okay all for a bag of popcorners did have it for lunch in those bowls worth it and we're supposed to get freezing rain again tomorrow for like eight hours or something and again like i'm just so fucking scared that's going to happen again i'm like why am i getting emotional about it, it was it was one of the worst times of my entire life <laughs> why uh one of the friends that was gone while this was happening, she wrote a little poem for me and, and she gave it to me in May last year. And I just remembered it. And I thought I'd read it to you guys because maybe you're having a shitty winter as well. I also need to read it for myself. And then it also reminded me of this other thing that I saved in my phone in 2021. But my friend wrote for me, she called it, it was an ice storm. Year after year, long winters have a price for the trees that get heavy and turn into ice. Are my branches too heavy? Am I a tree that's breaking too? Maybe I am, that's what winters do. The seasons remind us that we don't have control or was Invictus right? Am I the captain of my soul? Tomorrow will be sunny or the day after that. I'll look back on these words and silently laugh. Remembering the parts that I lost in that dark and heavy storm, my new branches will grow lighter and warm. I did lose parts of me and that's what winters are for to go in and really do the work and I think that's why I want to stay and do my book because writing my book there is a lot of internal work for me and I, I don't remember where this quote came from so it's not mine I found it somewhere probably Pinterest okay the gist of what I'm trying to say is this life is unpredictable it changes with the seasons. Even your coldest winter happens for the best of reasons. And though it seems eternal, like all you'll ever do is freeze. I promise spring is coming and with it brand new leaves. So if anyone going through it right now or just the January blues and then the February blues, we have to go through it. The, the new leaves we received in the spring are, they're always so worth it. Like my, my spring last year was after the ice storm. I went to Paris with my best friend. I'm just scared to anyone out there that's being absolutely kicked in the ass by winter. As a Canadian, I feel you.
laptop. I don't even think you expected that my first time. There's a lot, there's almost too many. I'm going to end this vlog with my honest review of Masters of the Air. Is it worth it? Because I just bought Apple TV again just to watch my three white men of the month uh, that have been on rotation uh, for at least a year and a half now. So is it worth it seeing Barry and Austin and... What the fuck is that guy that he was in like Fantastic Beasts and he was the older brother? Is it worth it? I'll let you know. Sitting down with a big old bowl of spaghetti and watching white men on the TV that I'm determined to breed with. Thank you. They make a nice pair, don't they? Oh, I should have introduced them earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Directed by Steven Spielberg and produced by Tom Hanks. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching. And I hope you're having a wonderful weekend or weekday. I I gotta go because now uh, I gotta be bricked up. <laughs> Bye.